Batman Beyond Stepping the Grave, which is the first story from DC Rebirth. And if you don't know what DC Rebirth is, it's pretty much DC saying like, hey, um, sometimes it gets a little bit co co continuity plastered, and sometimes we like do uh, rebirths and, and reboots and soft reboots. And they did a soft reboot a few years ago, and this is the first story of the soft reboot for Batman Beyond. Now, what I really appreciate from the first issue is that Bat they kind of give you the concept of Batman Beyond, of Terry Guinness, who is this 15-year-old, finds the Batcave, and he puts on the Batman outfit. Turns out it's, you know, because Bruce Wayne's too old to be Batman, and now Terry's Batman and he's kind of Spider-Man in a Batman outfit you know he's that's the whole concept of it and originally it was an anime show that so because of the concept they DC side like hey we like, like it so much so let's make it into a comic book you know stuff in those lines and, and here's the thing like I'm like Bruce Wayne is, is like the only Batman I went like I had some fun time reading this I went like I had, I had some really cool times. You know, I I don't know me feels like it's a, a very a professing, a very refreshing to a different take and seeing like a future version of Batman uh, or Gotham City, which is called Neo uh, Neo Gotham and stuff and those lines. I really, really appreciate it. And I mean, the plot is that like it's about fifteen years since the Terry has put on that suit on. Uh, people think Terry's dead. Uh, but yeah, you know, Batman's still around. Uh, Bruce uh, is is gone, and he is fighting. Terry is fighting this gang called the Jokers, who's been around since since forever. But they are going big and bigger and bigger to the point it's just ridiculous. Now this is joke. Yeah, it's spelled Jokers with a Z, by the way. But here's the thing: the the leader, Eternal. Uh, Eternal wants to bring back the original Joker to, back to life and of course Terry and Dinah and Max and Rex and everyone else is pretty much saying like um if you were like bringing back I don't know Green Lantern cool Trying to bring back that guy back. Cool, cool, cool. Fine. Green Lantern's cool. Maybe not the parallax thing, but cool. The Joker, maybe not doing with the whole death and the swatching and the whole thing and the whole, you know, the Bob Gorn cripple thing and the, the Jason Todd and, you know. And that was like, that's not a good idea. So they kind of tried to stop Terrell with making, you know, his twisted reality into a real thing and and the thing is like you know he Tano thinks Joker's a good guy and it's that whole twisted thing and it's kind of understands like what does this gang believe you know what the Joker was and you know and then well Batman's the bad guy and stuff in those lines and personally like he was a really good villain at the beginning, you know, him trying to test his grounds and see what he believes is wise and stuff in those lines. But to be honest, until when it's at the end, when it's obviously up to the like, let's do this thing, I'm like, it feels too muscularly. It feels like to quote the Incredibles, he starts monologuing. He starts monologuing. It, it's just felt like typical bad guy stuff and it's like come on you set up such a flesh out thing now, like part of the idea was just like hey you know you you know this is his goals and then you can make him the psycho comic book standard villain but it, it just doesn't work personally for me it just does not work but yeah everything else feels great um you know I like the quest I like the characters I like the concept of it um there's a big twist at the end, which I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I was like, please tell me. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried at this point, volume two, but people tell me, tell me if that ending, like the last like two paces pays off. Because I'm both like, oh my god. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, 
it's it's a quite great good thing to read. 